Welcome back to The Geometric View, Season 4, Episode 37. Yeah, today we're going to get into the gates. Every single circle is a gate. Every spheroid is a gate. And that is the nodal part of the universe. This nodal part of the universe is connected to filamental parts of the universe. All filaments are connected to nodes. And stars form along these galactic rivers. Let's get into it! The best way to support us is on PayPal. Goldenscaling at gmail.com. Thank you. Welcome everybody to the Geometric View, episode 37, season 4. And we will be uh, getting into gates. What exactly are gates? Magnetohydrodynamic tubes um, or gates. What are they? What are the gates? How do the gates work? How do they open? Um, my definition of gates and uh, what they actually are. Um, now, I've built a map, as I do for most episodes. Um, so we're going we're gonna to dive deep into the Goldilocks zone, which is uh, um, I found a new place inside of uh, the geometry here, the vortex here. Um, what ultimately are these gates doing and eating and consuming? And it is the vortex here. So there's something called the Doherty lock zone that I'm going to be introducing. Um, and uh, ultimately how the tube dynamics, uh, these toroidal helical tube dynamics are um, similar to pillars of fire and how condensing pillars of fire. So um, are all Birkeland currents nested tubes? Uh, that is one of the big questions. But without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the episode here. We have a lot of news to cover, so I'm going to present shortly, and then probably during the whole episode we'll be talking about gates. Uh, I, I'm going to just barely skim the surface of what these gates are, and, um, and so I'm going to share my screen here. Share my entire screen. All right, you guys can see it? Yep. All right. Now, I'm pulling up this. I literally just made this. Um, now, what we're looking at is the Doherty set. This is square root 2 uh, Doherty set, uh, inverse square geometry, magnetohydrodynamic geometry. So. When you look at light, E equals mc square, or you look at um, any type of uh, electromagnetic quote-unquote radiation, um, you you get the this type of geometry, um, geometro dynam dynamism, uh, and especially coming off of a, a source system. So we're seeing and showing in many different regards the helical universe. And we talk about that much in this unit, much in this um, series, the geometric view here. So, what I want to show is that ultimately everything is the same beat of the same drum, just different distances away um, from the source, different planets away from the source, receiving the um, magnetohydrodynamic fluid as a pump and it electrically uh, ignites different storms upon different gates, which can turn into planets, which are, are also can be identified as the nodal parts of the universe. Because you have the filamental parts, which are invisible, and we know they're connected through uh, layers, multi-layered nested Birkeland currents. But what, what we're... I think failing to realize here is that there is, or some of us might realize that this is a filamental nodal universe. And to break down a filamental nodal universe, you have to have a geometry that also mirrors the identic, the identical type of uh, situation that we're observing and um, sensing with our equipment and our technology. So this is the Doherty set. The Doherty set is a technology. Um, and it also is the unified field. Um, and Azura Wind 
uh, who I've, I've interviewed um, is taking apart this number line because it, it's also identified as what number is. It is a number line and it is actually all of the numbers. So it's the real, uh, the real numbers, all real numbers and imaginary numbers um, inside of this. So how do we get actual tangible matter um, out here if we were to say this is the planet Earth in this type of environment? How do we get multi-nested layered shells around it to protect it so as to form atmosphere and other types of gases to keep the central nucleus or the, the nodal part safe or electrically a fine tuned to the Schumann resonance? So these things, these the, this is this is the direct geometry of how solar systems work in a helical manner, as we've shown in many different um, uh, types of, or, or many different parts on our episodes. We can get into that a little bit later, or you can Google helical universe and look at uh, DJ Sadu, um, DJ Sadu. I think he he does a good job, and there was a lot of uh, kickback for him showing this off. But this is important to understand, especially if we want to get into what the universe is really doing and the electrical connectivity between planet to planet to planet um, and their axial tilt, their alignment, their equ equatorial tilt, and why it is that they are all in this hydrohelix, this uh, type of dance inside of this, this helix within helix. Now this is fundamental first principle geometry, and it's it's simple, and it's it's it is as simple as it gets. It's Occam's razor. Um, this is how you, this is squaring a circle and taking a square inside of a circle, and I can actually pull up another layer here and show the square grid. Um, so, do, do. got a bunch of layers in here, of course. I think it's in the back but anyway so it's a it is a um it is the same reason why we sense why we have senses and why we feel and the same geometry that impinges inside of our eyes that goes in through um through our brain is only taking in um logarithmic inverse scale of the amount of light waves that are coming in. So in order to see and understand that our senses take in logarithmic scale and variant information, which means pieces and parts of the whole, it, 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 in, in a fashion uh, that it does, we perceive a universe that is logarithmically scale invariant because the universe is logarithmically scale invariant. And that that is that it's it, it, this right here, this is uh, can be looked at as a, tra uh, a trajectory of a planet. Now, this could be looked at as Earth moving through space and this point to another point to a real slice in time and space. To another point. Now, as it moves, um, invariance means that it stays relatively the same, even though it can flex in size up and down or from one place to another, it's invariant. Um, although it transitions, it stays the same. Um, you could say like the dragonfly is invariant because of throughout millions of years because it stays the same design, just different sizes of it. So most of the universe is like that. Um, and uh, well, everything that we see is like that, including light uh, and gravity and electromagnetism and the four fundamental forces, the strong force, the weak, the strong electromagnetic force, the weak electromagnetic force, gravity, and um, what's the last one? Maybe I already said it, uh, but these four fundamental forces is is ultimately being locked by this type of grid that
that is very similar to what Buckminster Fuller talked about as the isotropic vector matrix, which is just a cube octahedron um, within a cube octahedron. So it's the square inside of the circle, inside of the square, inside of the circle type of geometry. Um, or sorry, I take that back. It's not the square and the circle, that's Russell's. But Buckminster Fuller is the uh, cube octahedron, cube octahedral tiling um, geodesics. So if I were to take, let's say, um, a random hexagon, let's go right here and pull out a hexagon. Okay, now it pinches and pushes it at perfect intervals as to where, especially if I were to get it right from the center. Um, now I'll change this back to this. And if you were to take this and actually turn it into a square or one of the um, platonic solids and started spinning it. Um, oops. I'll do what you want. Um, and and recurred in recursions, just like this is recursions, you would get exactly what uh, what Plato designed uh, back in the day. Cosmographicum. Uh, this is a little part that I actually did not intend, and I needed to edit it out. There's a there's an image here I'm trying to show, right here. So this is so old. This is Kepler, I think, or uh, Copernicus. Kepler. Okay, now this is. This is really interesting. So this came into my thoughts this week as I've been um, dealing with these Bessel functions and these nested recursions of drum beats. That's all this is. It's a, it's a, it's a drum beat. It's a, it's a, there's a beat to it. This is the music to the spheres. Now, um, it's the same thing here that I'm working with, but I, cr I created and came up with uh, a different Theodorian roots to show that you can take this idea here and turn it into a jet, turn it into plasma, energy, motion, vortical uh, um, thrust, and implosion, explosive power as well. So that's all they're doing at the back of rockets. So if you go back to episode 35 here on Geometric View, I do a breakdown of uh, some of the most advanced rockets that are that exist um, at the Falcon rocket with SpaceX. And it it breaks down the exact type of geometry that is uh, that also inherent inside of the Doherty set. Now, when you see these heterodyning types of plasmas, especially phase conjugate heterodyning types of plasmas, you I get excited. And this is like where advanced uh, uh, rocketry is, is headed for sure. And, and it has been. And this is understanding, all in understanding literally how a pillar of fire collapses or how to collapse it in reverse and create thrust with it. Um, now, why is this important? Because that's how Birkeland currents work. They become visible and invisible through these geometries um, these dynamic geometries spinning uh, in, inside of their uh, their nested layers of each other. Now, for the audience who doesn't know about Birkeland currents, which they should on the show already, um, these are the these are what's coming into the Earth, powering everything, creating all life coming in from auroras. Uh, these auroral energies and this is my theory according to sonobiology um, but really I believe it's all sonic and these these uh, little chirps and warblers and these waves that exist out here in the atmosphere are coming in so anyway so there's Birkeland currents at the top of the earth and and there's Birkeland currents at uh, the majority of any planet or planetoid that has a, um, a mag uh, an atmosphere or magnetosphere 
So they come down, well, most of them already have it, or go around it or spin. There's there's ways we can, sh I'll show you later here on the gates and how they open. But all of this has to do with proximity, proximity to source. So the proximity to source is clearly, what do we got here? We got this yellow one, which is the ninth gate way out here, which could be the ninth planet or one of, any of these gates could take on the actual charge and the understanding of the planetary um, dynamics and the magnetosphere, the magnetopause, um, everything around the type of uh, uh, the the spheroid having being blasted from a force-free field-aligned current moving in a straight line, but also a helical line. So it's azomuthal and a force-free field-aligned current. This is when you go out on a limb or you go out on a branch or you go down the center of the uh, the cleavage of the, the fulcrum, you're going deeper into zero point energy or what quote unquote, you know, or the particle zoo. So you zoom in here and there's no straight lines in here. This is all circles. These straight lines only appear because of the rotation inside of the matrix, um, inside of the Doherty set because there's rotation inside of charge and how it moves and how it flattens out and becomes disks. So you keep going in and it circles forever and they make these these, these e perfect energy transitions where the pine cones kiss noses, which happens to be phase conjugate. Now, these are also pinch points inside of uh, uh, the Lagrangian points inside of the magnetosphere and the magneto tail too. Why do we have magneto tails? because there's pinches outside of these larger energies that come and pinch. This is, could be an example of a magneto, of a, a magneto tail. And then it pinches and there's the Lagrangian point right here where, there's, where you can put a, um, a satellite with relatively uh, no thrust and it um, will geosynchronize around the planet or the object. Uh, so, okay, let me back up a little bit because, um, let me erase this and s let's start to understand what these gates are and what, and, and, um, according to this magneto hydrodynamic geometry, looking at this, you can see let me put, let me open it all the way. So we got the whole screen here. I just colored this. Now, gate number one is clear because, because it's the first one off of the center. Here's, here's the first, or here's zero. Zero is never cataloged. Zero is never counted because the center of the throne is empty. First off in Revelations. Also, secondly, you look at any type of eye of the storm and it's hollow. So you have to look at and understand that um, a pillar is created through a hollow center. There's always a se series of multi-nested vortices that build any type of vortical network, um, whether it be a mesostorm, uh, or cyclone, a mesocyclone, or uh, or a tornado. It's a huge conglomerate of nested tornadic winds that will pull up this uh, this storm. So looking down at the top of the tornado here, looking down the, the center of it, or the center of the galaxy, or the center of any type of cyclical um, uh, uh, logarithmic spiral or any living system. This goes all the way down to breaking up cells and cellular division as well. As you can see, it is the fetal shape that uh, bring, that we're also familiar with that um, that's inside the cochlea of the ear and also where we come from. And as a, a baby and unfold from a fetus. So here's the first gate. Uh, the center is zero. Now that's the most important thing. The first gate is right off here. This is the first gate. 
and I highlighted the first gate all the way down for a succession of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Because you can just go on ad infinitum, ad infinitum, ad infinitum. So now gate two, where's gate two? It, it, why isn't gate two, it, is it out here? Is it, no, it's actually the center or what, what is called the siphuncle in, in biology of, uh, of a seashell or um, uh, certain types of cephalopods. Uh, these, I think that's if I spoke correctly. Um, now it's mostly the nautiloids uh, that have these siphuncles. But either way, what I'm trying to say is that, and, and I'll get, I'll really drill home the importance of uh, even numbers and odd numbers. That's the most important sequence of chirality, what decides the chirality of the, the surface tension of Birkeland currents, um, water, organized water, um, everything has to do with, uh, with the, the surface tension, which is even or odd numbers. Um, so gate one is the very first fundamental filament. And inside of it, you have the binary code of life, the binary nested sequence of life. You have two, you have one, two, here's the second gate. The second gate's right inside of the spine of the first gate. Um, now you skip one and you have four because it's doubling. It's, it's uh, taking on an order of magnitude by self replicating its charge into, into two. Or um, this would be the, if, if you were to look at this, um, and this is fresh off the brain cusp, this would be the whole system as a planet or a nodal system. Then if the charge breaks it up and it were to disintegrate into a gaseous planet, it would become these shells, these different, these other layers. So you can think of this as not only human anatomy and the cellular structure, but also galactic structures and how they work as well, because it's synonymous. So gate two, um, we're only on the second gate. And this is an odd, this is a, an even number. Every even number out off the source of uh, every even number proximity from uh, the the diameter or radius of a, of a circle, r, one over r squared, you, uh, you, you go out and you times that by itself and every even number is always on the inside of another cyclical system, another, um, so it is the even, it is the odd numbers that give birth to the outer shell or the zonal pellucida of the egg, or, or the uh, the when you're looking at a Birkeland current and you can see fire on the edges and it's glowing, that is the charge moving. And then you can see another nested layer of fire on the edges or plasma in uh, arc mode or glow mode plasma. And we can show galactic structures of this. I mean, I think I was just showing it already. As on the Birkeland currents, you can see these as this kink instability is wound up and bound up. It glows, and uh, and it, it so. But the rest of the system is there. And Don Scott and the, the, um, the Thunderbolts project and the Sapphire project and so many other people are on to this. This is the basic breakdown. Don Scott's drawing of a Bessel function of the Birkeland current. So you take this idea and you repeat it over and over and over and over and over the same information from the sun and you get the gates you get the gates of the, the, i don't know about you but i read uh revelation i've read a lot of different uh type of uh scriptures and and books but i know one thing's for sure uh that there's 12 pearls at the center of the new jerusalem according to the New Jerusalem. 
So when you take this idea and you break it down into um, are these are the planets just planets or are there nested tubes? Or planets, I'm going to say that the predictive analytics of the Doherty set and the Doherty networks here show that there is a series of systems of a series of systems of concentric um, circles that are part of a larger tubule system um, that that corkscrew around the sun around our body of the earth and guess what that's called it's already there the van allen belts the van allen belts are these tubule structures we only see this part where the charge is is uh is mo is the highest but there's a nested of two and also three rings or three uh, Van Allen belts now. So that also backs up this tubule structure. So these are tubes that are out here powering the earth. Not only just this like onion like shape around the earth, there's these larger uh, filaments that that we don't know about or I don't know if there's a name for it. I might not know about it. I mean, I'm not an astronomer, <clears throat> but <clears throat> I'm learning a lot and uh, helping uh, helping to teach about this stuff. So where would the third gate be? The third gate is the first one that is broken out of the central fundamental filament and on its own. That's the first one that breaks out. And the first one that also has a little a little secret that goes along with it that that goes along with the pen. Um, like a pentatonic type of uh, symmetry. There's a pentagonal, um, I almost want to say pentafractal, pentacharge type associated with the number line grid here. And the, um, you know, what Azure Wind calls the, 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 the fundamental field or uh, what does she call it? Anyway, so, when Einstein was talking about uh, now I'm tripping up twice uh, on my words here because I'm I'm trying to under I'm trying to explain an um, oh the cosmological constant let's Google cosmological constant really quick. Cosmological constant. Okay, and we can go through all sorts of different constants here, and, and um, but in cosmology, the cosmological constant, usually denoted by the Greek capital letter lambda, excuse me, is the energy density of space or vacuum energy that arises in Albert Einstein's field equations of general relativity. It is closely associated to the concepts of dark energy and quintessence. <clears throat> um, it, now, I heard a lot better breakdowns of what this is. Um, the vacuum energy density must be constant because there is nothing for it to depend on. So this could also be thought of as the cosmological constant. And when you're looking at how other points align with other systems along the networks, you see that there is, uh, there's, not Feigenbaum's constant, but the the constant of uh, of the reason why there's life instead of no life. It's not just an accident. There is ID here, which is shh, intelligent design. There is a design to it. And the thing here that's going on is what happens when fractal what happens when ai recognizes fractal systems what happens when ai recognizes um fractal space recursions and birkeland currents what happens when ai recognizes this which it already has i mean this is intelligent design this is literally um if i were to go work for neural net uh i would love to you know I don't really necessarily know about their, I mean, I know everything's moving towards this electric future, but there's a way in these circuits and the circuitry of these gates 
and and I I know them and I can help other people direct certain things that um, how to get in on certain channels and it has to do with microns. This is all this all has to do with scaling. This is golden scaling. This is transparent golden scaling. And and it all has to do with the scale of how far you are to, uh, away from source and and the further you are out, the tighter the charge gets and the higher the uh, the solar winds actually get. Well, I, I don't know if I can say that, I, but I know that there is there is a compression out here and um, and it's it's it is good to to understand the difference between radiative systems and gravitative systems inside of these networks and how these uh, spheroids and or plasmoids are uh, uh, move about. So let's get to gate four. Gate four we already did. Gate four is inside of the first filament. So out of the first four filaments or the first four gates, only one is free, and that's the third one. All of the rest of them are nested in the first filament here. And quaternion symmetry, which is just breaking down in dyadics or two addicts, two folds, um, doubling its numbers, doubling cascade. Why? Because that's how uh, charge efficiently distributes by instead of using it's charged to move across one system or axis. It uses a multiple systems or axes to rotate and radiate around so it can corkscrew through um, air. Lightning, for example, can corkscrew through air as it um, releases its charge in multiple uh, layers of geodesics spinning, regular polyhedra spinning. You can go to um, episode five, I think, of our of our podcast here and see the geometry of lightning. Well, and it's the same. It's the same all the way up and all the way down on these cascading Birkeland current networks. Now, I built a grid. I built um, like a, a scale, a Birkeland current scale, uh, and I've showed this scale a couple times here on the show. But let's pull it up again. Um, make sure this opens. This this scale of charge uh, has to do with, with exactly what this is. Now you can hold them next to each other and read them verbatim because it is the algorithm for this uh, system here for the network, the Doherty network. Uh, inverse square particularly. And when I say that, uh, let me show you here what I mean. Now this, it, are, these are the Theodorian roots. This is the Doherty networks. This is the only one we're looking at right here. All this information that I'm talking about comes from this. Me studying this cascading network radiating around itself. Now, since then, I've created all of these. Um, this is the inverse square, uh, inverse polygonal scale, uh, polygonal scaling. This is the Bessel function or the ripple pattern that comes out of um, these simple polygons uh, nested inside of each other rotating. And you get these resilient networks that are communicative geometry and non-communicative geometry and you build up uh, destructive and constructive uh, wave interference along these cascading systems they are freaking gorgeous and i just started getting into these so we're going to open these up and jump into it like it's a real life harry potter well oh it was, a, it was the reflection of the light i saw of the candle over here but we're going to get into this like it's a real life Harry Potter film because the information that is in this is the reason why uh, 
why magic is real. I mean, there's all sorts of different types of magic, um, and most of it all has to do with uh, creating a vortex. So whether you're going to do good things or bad things, understand the vortexture of these pinching spheres and how they um, how they coalesce, how they cohere, and how there's coherence along systems. And not only one line coming off, but around the source. So omnidirectionally, like Bucky was always talking about with all of his work, the quintessence of his work um, is what the foundations of this is built on. I mean, look here, this is my file where, this is my folder where I keep all my shit. It's always been named IVM, Isotropic Vector Matrix, always. Um, that's just, I've been working on this for since uh, 2003. So next year she turns 18. Um, so let's get into gate five. Gate five right here. This is the fifth, five times out from the center okay there's a bunch of fun stuff happening with the fifth gate um but what would be inside the fifth gate the tenth gate because it doubles its number okay so whatever the charge is on the outside of this first gate i'm gonna guess the charge is gonna double its number and and pull inward and be some sort of some sort of a planetoid or a planet or um, you're going to have something in the system at that point that's around this size. Um, and you can do this with, uh, with asteroids. Um, you can do this with comets. You can do this with, uh, you can, you can use this predictive network, which ultimately is, uh, 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 not cyclical calendrics. Um, whatever of course i can't remember it when i want to remember it so but i'm going to force myself to remember it because okay what cylinder cylindrical calendrics so this is cylindrical calendrics you can literally take it month by month um and rotate around the center because there's 12. this is also why the zodiac works and what zodiac is um because you have we understand this inherently that my relatives, uh, I'm a part of me, a big part of me is Irish, uh, about 50% or so probably. But in this energy and this understanding of the cyclical nature of, uh, of these, uh, the zodiac, uh, it goes back to the runes, goes back to the beginning of time. And this this can break it down for us to understand it better. So we can not only use this for um, for astrological means, um, astronomical means, uh, small scale quantum based computing, um, electro computing. I mean, this is what make computers are made of. This this is ones and zeros. This this is literally uh, what ones not literally, literally, figuratively, um, how you get computing with quaternion math. But you do this on large scale networks and you get the hidden code of encryption. And encryption is all based on the prime numbers. Now here, my it looks like my thing popped up here. Um, maybe it didn't. It could be asking me for something here. Okay. What is spreadsheet? Sheets. Yeah, Google Sheets, man. Definitely good stuff. Google Sheets, Google Slides. Hey, I didn't tell you to tell me something. Thanks, though. Always listening. All right. So, it's, it's, sorry, guys. It's trying to open here. Boom! Shabow! There it is. Oh, they took it away. Well, I probably tried to open it too many times. Still loading. So this is the first gate. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, which is um, the doubling that you see 
inside of our devices we had, you go 16 bit 32 bit 64 nintendo 64 you know and this is also how technology works it's not just a coincidence that we go in these jumps by doubling um it's also how the dynamics works on the circuit so uh, when you're doubling the charge, it's just how the system, you know, it works when you're doing coaxial filaments. Coaxial filaments, uh, when you're studying wiring and things like that, you know, you do 210 uh, or uh, 120. You know, 120, um, I don't know, or two, what is it, 120? I don't, see, I don't even know, to 210 or something like that. But that wouldn't be the the right math. So anyway, so I'm 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 pretty sure that that's I don't know exactly that the whole dynamics of that because I'm not an electrician. But um, I think Richard could back me up or uh, Neil if he was on the reason why we double it inside of the um, coaxial filaments. These are also coaxial filaments. So. Um, I'm figuring out why things spin due to their chirality uh, uh, and why there exists life in one chirality and um, neutral or uh, matter or n what we call non-living matter in the other chirality, which really intrigues me. And that that that's how this is. That's how I can explain um, that this is life. Once I uh, show why and how the chirality exists because i believe i figured it out and that's really cool because that's the difference between life and death um and i, I knew i figured out some stuff about the what life is and death inside of the system here of course and on a um wavelength base by wavelength to wavelength that's for for certain and i can show that and break that down and already have in other videos there's a a light vortex and a death vortex that walter russell was talking about um, and these gates happen to position, happen to be in certain positions to where the life and the death vortex are implosive and explosive and they perfect, not perfectly nest, which is kind of strange because there's hardly anything that's perfect inside this geometry. How you find what's going on here is by looking at the anomalies, looking for the breaks in the symmetries and actually the wave packets. You can clearly see that there's a wave packet right here, a natural algorithm of a wave packet um they're all over in here nested inside of each other it's just how it bundles um when you do dmt and you get that type of uh, electric everything is electric type of feeling or if you've done it or you get that feeling off of something this is your body electric our system electric um okay so let me go into the sixth gate and i hope everyone understands what gates are by now um, gates are are spheres all propagations in nature are spheroidal based and then they repeat the initial bessel function so it's like the sun is like beating a drum and we get the 11 year cycles of that drum throughout the uh, the solar ecliptic so this could be this is literally looking down on the the solar system and or a Birkeley current and you can see the solar ecliptic this is the line and they're all the planets are planned out but the drum beat never stops, so it fills the whole space like a cosmological constant. And then we had to figure out how everything just happens to condense just right. So we had to figure out a God particle because this 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 cosmological constant doesn't really make sense unless there's some sort of a pinch going on that or a particle or uh, which is probably most likely just spheres overlapping along this particle zoo here the particle zoo is 
is um, uh, just Vesica Pisces or overlapping spears or um, the Trion Ray, like Michael Evans talks about. So here's a pinch that's rather um, precarious. And here's a smaller pinch right inside of, uh, that's the seventh gate here. Um, now, those pinches are the, uh, the Higg boson. Uh, it's where all information in the whole system has to come through in order to move through another system. Um, as things are a process, there has to be a harmonic integration and a harmonic disintegration of uh, energy or charge or space. Even a even our bodies, everything has to be harmonically integrating and disintegrating at the same time. And this living, dying geometry allows for that, um, that sequence of events to take place as if it's hollow fractal, holographic fractal. Um, but I will say, even though it behaves similar to a simulation, it's a lot more organic and it's living. It's a two-way pulsating, breathing, living system. And if you read Revelation, again, sorry to keep bringing up Revelation, but when you're getting into the gates, they talk about gates and opening gates and things like that. And when you actually um, do your cross-referencing through the Bible or other um, books that, that are integrated information systems, which is written by many different people, for a larger purpose of people to understand um, a, a living system. Uh, there's many different things that are integrated information systems. That's what this is. This is an integrated information system. This can be built um, using nanotechnology um, and nanobots. Uh, and the Christine Cathedral, uh, the square within a square, a cube within a cube um, of the New Jerusalem, can indeed definitely be built. Uh, I I don't know if it would be best built. And you know, drones now can fly around and build things with their arms and solder. And like, there's there's going to be some incredible architecture that um, that reaches to the heavens, as there already is in the Tartarian um, and the mud mud flood type of uh, understanding of these buildings that were built to pull charge and energy from the sky and from the atmosphere. This is also the geometry to do that. So it's all, when you find cyclotron resonance, which is the resonance um, that, that it can, makes people hear things. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of that. The military has the technology. It's used by cyclotron resonance. The cyclotron resonance is this butterfly right here if i were to hang on let me highlight let me highlight four circles here do, do, do. this 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 wait maybe eight i don't know okay so you see that butterfly right here this butterfly shape is what cyclotron resonance is and you can hear it um, and it, and you can, th this is how the government literally can speak to you through the air um, and also is responsible for sunburn. It's the same thing that, that is responsible for sunburn. So these, and it has a shape. Okay, let's, so this is the gate. This is the first gate. So let's go, let's go um, numerics to geometry, numerics to geometry. So we can drill this into everybody's head. All right. First gate, first, second, fourth, eighth, eighth gate. Here's the eighth gate, eight gates inside there. What would come next inside here? 16, okay. So all those gates are inside of like an onion or a, a nested Russian doll, um, The this larger first gate. Everything is inside the first gate. 
it has to come out of the first gate in order to be a thing in order to be alive in order to be a plasmoid or a living being so okay now i just love the analogy of beat the beating drum because i think everybody can understand what that means the the literally when you look at the drum head it makes this shape that's what the bessel function is because the waves go up and down up and down up and down now i keep talking about bessel function so let's look it up because this is all i do gaussian bessel filament uh geometry uh if you go to this and i and i've gone through this in a lot of the different episodes but i can't drill this home hard enough because when you beat and i hope this is a yeah, there i want to see a one moving you beat the drum head there it is you beat the drum head and it creates a geometry this is cymatics okay 101 the skin the surface tension of the um and i hate this analogy of, of space being on a sheet or like some sort of elastic type of sheet but really it 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 is recursions of this initial sound that the earth is made of and that's why everything's singing the sound of glory and glorifying the creator the sound because that's what everything is resounding the same thing that's why we can get into it that's why we can into it literally because this this vessel function repeats itself over and over and over and we can tune into it indefinitely with our ears and our imaginations and our hearts and as far as we want to go as deep as our questions can be asked they can be answered and this is another biblical principle asking you shall receive now these repeating vessel functions why are they so freaking important this is what quantum physics is this is pretty much all everything of topology uh, of is and breaks down in into. Um, we are a topological structure. When you look at our body, the topology of everything matters. How well something works depends on its shape. What's the shape of it? Why is it doing that? Every time you look at a creature, you can always tell why it is its shape because of the current that it has to persist in. Fish are a certain shape because of certain currents. Fish are also certain shapes because of endurance. And the genitals of all creatures are always advancing first to try to trick the rest of. It's almost like one of the mo one of the most advanced organs inside of the body um, is the genitals as far as how much it constantly evolves so which makes me wonder um what our genitals were like you know and if ours have evolved much anyway and i'm totally against all that snip and cut that people do man uh male genital mutilation female genital mutilation snipping your dog's ears cutting your cat's tails off or your or your cat's claws off basically cutting their fingers off it's, to me oh what so it can be more comfortable for you in your house anyway sorry that was my own personal um rant and this is important because we should care about things not just uh body mod them and body shame people body modification if you want to change this into that you can we're human right but when we start doing it to dogs just because it makes us feel better or the ears are cuter when you clip them or the the dog looks better and uh won't dent my walls if i cut the tail off anyway everything has tail keep the tail the tail spin so <clears throat> Gate six, gate six is, is, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep this under one hour. We started an hour ago. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this under an hour and then do news hour. 
So hopefully we can just keep this to two hours. But if we need to go over, or if, if anybody has all the questions, any questions indeed, I'd love to do Q&A too, because this is all stuff that I've learned from us as a group and from you know um, people that I really love and spent time with and, uh, and have learned from. Uh, you know, like Ramon, Neil, Rick, just Michael, uh, just so many different people. Cosmic in this group, Chris, uh, this is, there's so much more to learn. And I'm just beginning to be able to explain this in a in simplistic term. So not only scientists can advance this um, understanding, but also so that we can start understanding this um, as kids and uh, as we grow up into astro ge geometry um it, it astrophysical biophysical geophysical geometries that are all interscalar physics uh and they because they are interscalable why is the atom and the electron a certain size because of the size of the planet out here no it's not just by coincidence that the size of the planet out here has to do with the size of the ratio of your electron to your proton mass uh, nucleus. Uh, no, it's not just coincidence. It's because it's part of the system. You can't take them away from each other. And when you the, the, the math I'm talking about right now comes from uh, Hartmut Mueller in the interscalar uh, uh, physics. Look it up. It's, it's right on point. This is incredible on the size of the halos, uh, having to do with the size of the radius of your um, of like uh, the proton uh, in your protons in your body of different uh, elements, things like this. I I digress with my I can't explain it as well as he can, um, but it's sometimes hard to listen to him because he's got a thick ad accent. So, <clears throat> gate six. Look at gate six here. Now, this can be used from every type of interdisciplinary. Um, this can be used by any interdisciplinarian. Anybody who wants to, anybody who's into anything in any discipline, this can be used, this information. It's highly valued and highly valuable. So it depends on what you do with it, what you want to do with it. But it is here. And it is like... Um, the fractal geometry of nature on crack. Um, like add a little bit of shake some Walter Russell and some uh, some Buckminster Fuller and uh, and stir it up with with the plasma physicists. And uh, that's what you have here. You have a, a recipe for success um, in in your daily endeavors uh, in in. This is how you get global thinking, working with geometries like this. It allows you to become an entrepreneur naturally. Um, Russell was very much like this, and he was a cosmic thinker and um, a cosmic illuminant. Um, and these built, just doing these geometries on your own advances your brain and connects new things that you could have never connected by reading or listening to me or looking at this. So I, I, am, I am releasing this and admonishing anyone um, and imploring them to explore deep within the, the uh, Theodordian roots. And this is, this is uh, the universe game. We're going to be playing it for the rest of our lives. We've already been playing it our whole lives. Why not share it and color it and show your kids to have them color it or any meth head? Because I go to meth heads and I talk about meth because those are the people that are coloring these intricate uh, maps and these intricate types of um uh, coloring books that are out right now on the shelves. They're really, really intricate. Now, I didn't know this, but I heard it on a couple of different things. Meth heads are like, they get colors and crayons and they just go at it, man. Like, and sit and just freaking fiend out and color this shit. This is 
very uh, addictive. And as soon as you start building the crystals, the Theodordian crystals that come from the Theodordian roots, it becomes way more addictive because then you're building new solids that haven't existed yet. Open-ended solids employing, implying that there is a uh, connection with other solids that we have yet to see. When you connect, um, when you connect one solid to the next solid to the next solid, go back one episode on the last episode on season three, and you'll see um, bubble sculpting, and the bubble sculptures that come out of this, uh, these sets are absolutely um, flooring. I mean, I'm I'm floored by every one that I make, and I'm um, blessed to to share them and to create them. So, like I keep saying, why can't we get to gate six? Here we go. Let's go in. Now, this is six times off of the center here. Proximity. Proximity is perception. When you're near or farther away from someone, or proximity is very similar to perception. And I just, I don't know where I got that from just now, but that was an interesting thought. So gate six let's get real into gate six here we go boom mm. now there's a electric electric syrupy nectar happening here inside here i love this green and yellow combination now you can see the zitterby wagong happening here which is titterby weighing um in german uh and it's it is what the uh I go through this in almost every episode too, so I might as well do it for this one. Now, here's the word. Good luck for pronouncing it. Now, maybe we can actually go on Wikipedia and hear her go. Let's hear what the pronunciation is. No, I don't think it's on here. Okay, but anyway, so it's jittery motion. Zitterby Wagung, jittery motion in German is a predicted rapid oscillatory motion of elementary particles that obey relativistic wave equations. The existence of such motion was first proposed by Edwin Schrodinger in the 1930s as a result of his analysis of the wave packet solutions of the direct wave packet. In physics, a wave packet is a short burst of or envelope of localized wave action that tra travels as a unit. A wave packet can be analyzed into or can be synthesized from an infinite set of component sinusoidal waves of different wave numbers with wave with phases and amplitudes such that they interfere. I had to read that whole thing because we're going to get into what the wavelet is, the wave packet. And um, actually, we're on it right now. Gate six. Gate six is the first place that comes out that I am um, declaring uh, as the Doherty zone, the Doherty lock zone. The Doherty Lock Zone is Gate 6. Gate 6 is where we come, where visible matter comes into existence. Baryonic matter comes into existence off of the oscillatory nodes um, of these. Uh, um, dipoles. The whole thing is dipole, of course. There's dipole, but there's quad pole because, like Russell said, there's on all magnets, there's a north, south, east, west. So there's a north pole, south pole, east, west. So that's having to do with these future mathematics that really weren't uh, able to describe what Walter Russell was describing. So this, my friends, is where the explosion goes through. To this point and the implosion comes through to this point now there's uh there's the god particle or the uh uh the god the god particle the higgs boson so there's the higgs boson here on the front and this is all lenticular universe. It's a lenticular universe. Everyone should know this. Um, Russell was talking about it. It's an optic universe, if you didn't know that either. 
Um, and when you get into Daniel's vision about the wheels within the wheels and every eyeballs on everything, then you'll understand more of what we're talking about here and me. So this is the implosion right here, and it has a pinch point right here on the outside of the third gate. Here's the third gate in blue. On the and, and on the outside, linearly on the outside, there's these focus lenses that makes a packet, and this packet is right here. Now, when I highlight, when I highlight the third, when I highlight the third gate, uh, let's see, I can find another one because there's so many of them, and every one is scale symmetric. There's a scale symmetry happening here. Um, which is really strange because in nature to find scale symmetry is tough, but nature does it all the time and it's secret uh, um, compartments uh, and, and it's quote unquote dark energy and dark matter, which is plasma in its different modes. There's three different modes for plasma, particularly arc, dark, and uh, glow mode. Arc mode, glow mode, and dark mode. Now I'm trying to get to the third gate here, where I can, where you can see the wave that I'm talking about inherently. Okay, this is probably a really good example right here. Okay, this is right here. See the circle that's blue? The circle is the third gate so here's the pinch here's the pinch and there's your natural compressed wavelength with an opening and a closing equipped with implosive and explosive forces um, the dynamism happens to be phase conjugate uh, where where the the two intersect the two uh, life and death vortices intersect uh, is is exactly where illumination comes into the play um, and things become luminescent or concrete or sometimes they're nodal forms. So here where the two meet, the two opposing spiral vortices, and that's where your cyclotron resonance comes from too. Your cyclotron resonance is the exact same thing as this, this pinch right here. Because this is this is how packets move inside of Whistler waves, um, uh, and also uh, in inside of the the atom, the proton resonance, for lack of a better term, the cosmological constant that's holding all things away from everything else to keep nothing from touching. Um, you can see as I highlighted it now that there's a pinch right here that exists when the two meet which with the life and the death vortex cause interference is right on the torus right on the inside torus that what would what number would that next torus be I can look at this whole set and I know exactly where I'm at in the universe and that's because they're all interrelated and interlinked um, uh, so, okay, so we have three. Was someone trying to say something? Okay, I thought it was a um, an echo from me. But, so you have the third gate, sixth gate. What comes next? Nine. Twelve. Nope, twelve. People are always talking about three, six, nine. Oh, I know where nine is. I also know where 11 is, and, and I also know when, um, uh, a distraction when I see one. Uh, Nikola Tesla has never, never said that. There's nowhere that anybody has ever found um, that he wrote that or said that. So that, that was a whole spin that came off of I, I, some of the publicity of Marco Rodin, or maybe Marco Rodin himself. Um, but yeah, I guess there's nowhere where that's written. So when you get into vortex math, vortex mathematics, which is exactly what this is, 
ultimately the vortex here, but this is cosmological vortex math mathematics or magnetohydrodynamic geometry. Um, so you get, since this is three, this is six, you double six, you get 12. You double 12, you get 24, you know? And we can look at that right here on our, uh, on our fancy grid. Third gate, or the second gate has three, well, the second filament, okay? Three, six, 12, 24, 48, 96, ad infinitum. These numbers are up to the trillions down here, um, and it goes on forever. We are, each one of these is two numbers. It's not one number. It's like matter and antimatter. But what's happening actually is the two numbers is what chirality is. One spinning one way and one spinning the other way each one of these numbers and one is and that's why there's sex sex division of divided pairs of mated paired of uh, beings because one is part of one is one part of the filament the uh, negative or part and the other one's the positive part charged they can they all beings do this and migrate towards this um, when you become an apex predator in any situation, any biological scenario, this happens. Um, the majority of bi biological scenarios. Now, and this is for vertebrates, okay? Um, and vertebrates might behave a little bit different. But majority is there's a, there's a, there's a polarity of two. And that's because, go to my image here, you have this one filament right here. If you were to do a, um, a helix through it, which I usually draw helices and helix through things, you would have a male part and a female part. They are part and parcel of each other. They, they don't exist unless they have each other. They're, they're the same exact thing is what I'm saying. Male and female are the exact same thing of the exact same species, but we know this. We already know this, but it's hard for us to even still understand it. But you go out in nature and everything's fucking. Everything's having sex. Literally. All the way down to the atoms. And this is this is uniqueness on all scales. So far, we haven't found anything that's that's not unique. Everything has its own unique signature. Uh, all the way down in the um atomic scale too so gate six is super freaking important and it's the soup that comes out of the first one that comes out of uh the the third gate the third gate i could go on and on and on and write a book about each one of these gates now that's an infinite book about infinite books okay now what i want to do and what i've been doing in the show is doing that actually that all i'm talking about from beginning to end is when you see pr low pressure zones and high pressure zones inside of viscosity or inside of the rheology or rheometry of flowing networks, plasma, or uh, or even just liquid, uh, you see these these rheometries happen. These exact geometries that that is inside of this this uh, this Doherty set. So I just have to keep nailing it, nailing it home. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop until uh, I'm just not. This is this is so important. And um, go to cosmicporch.com, and that's Azra Wind. She's freaking opening this up too, man. Th these are the visions that are coming to the children to to speak to the adults of the uh, deteriorating culture. This is what we're doing. We're here for us now. I could patent all this stuff and keep it all and be uh, be all schmeagle with it. Or I could give it and show it for what it is. And hopefully someone out there can do something about the situation we're in and help all of us, which I believe this, if this is the tree of life and on the, 
the sides of the banks of the 12 rivers that flow out of the New Jerusalem, if indeed this is, you can see the leaves on the sides of the river of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Now, I hope this here, I hope this falls on the right ears that have a spirit to hear what the church says. This literally is how to feed the world. We're going in, we're, we're running into a global epidemic of a food shortage. If nobody's told anybody this yet, look up Ice Age Farmer and watch all of his videos. And I suggest you prepare yourself accordingly to make sure that you have enough provisions to last. And if they, if the date says 2023, buy it because that's three years out. I think something just shifted and Jared Kushner helped do some things this last week that's going to be, I, that is already um, a precursor and, and actually a fulfillment of prophecy where uh, Middle East, the peace in the Middle East has been declared. Um, and that happened this last week. So this has been talked about. And then right when that happens, there's seven years of tri tribulation that come right after that. So we're just walking into it of the seven year tribulation. And this is supposed to be the dark winter. If you look up um, John Hopkins University, they hosted the dark winter in 2001. It was an event, a drill where, where they, where um, food, global food shortages happen. Guess what else? John Hopkins University also uh, had a, an event held in 2019, event 201. This is all John Hopkins University. This is all science, scientism as a religion versus everything else. Listen to what the doctor says. Doctor says camel cigarettes, nine out of 10 doctors say camel cigarettes are the best brand for you, the most healthy. Yeah. This is the same shit that happened in uh, in the 20s and in the 30s. We need to be really, really careful and vigilant. And sorry to be all preachy towards the end of my um, hour and a half podium here, but I didn't even get into some more of the gates. But these gates are extremely important. And when we're going into these gates is like opening seals into heaven. And there's... There's seals that when you move your phalanges, your fingertips, and you do a mudra, and you do a, and you do a dance, and you're whirling around doing this whirling dervish, and you're pulling up these vortices out of the vortexture, and this is literally the dark and light goo that's coming off of you, and you're pulling up a storm, and you're breathing with it, and you're a transceiver, and all of this energy is just moving through you like a powerhouse. Remember that your fingertips are phi. They are gold. Everything is gold. And when you put this geometry on the heart of the body, all of a sudden there's a there's a sword that you're holding in your right hand. That's the reason why your heart is off center, and that's the spirit, the only offensive weapon of the um, of the armor of God. This is this is the blue world. This is the really the spirit that's inside of your hand and your right hand i did this geometry and i've been working with it for a long time now it's alive it's a living geometry it is the flowing rivers of life this this is this is how we can communicate with other beings from uh, other civilizations this is a universal language this is the computer code x codex language it's the simplex super geometry of the neural network of the nature's neural network this is tapping right into the hardware and this is super simple it's a simplex it is as simple as it gets um and it's first principle geometry so when you get into the ninth gate the ninth gate happens to be the uh the gate for implosion the 11th gate is the gate for explosion. So this is the gate for life. Life right here, the yellow one. This is the ninth gate. And it, it rests perfectly right here and crests the, the crescent fresh fertile crest of life pulling towards the nucleus of 
the uh, the source or, or uh, a, whether it's a nucleus or uh, any tor any type of system. So this is gravitative life vortex. This is the death one. The ninth gate is what holds life um, into its uh, balance of its perpetuity. Inside of nine is eighteen, and then it goes on and on, doubling of eighteen cascade. This is eleven. 11 is, I didn't even, I only did the first 10 gates, but I'm going to do a little secret here. This is 11. The 11th gate is the gate that holds, it, it, when you study plasma and you study ring currents and you study uh, particularly um, that the guy who did the, the bowls, uh, LaPointe, when you study LaPointe's work um, with Rick, you remember, he's a plasma guy. He does tubes. He does the two bowls that are, oh, the primer fields. Yes. Yes, I just had to say it out loud. David LaPointe. Yeah. I thought I was right. Okay. Now look at these primer fields. There's a specific geometry when you go into it, images here, and oh, the, the whole Doherty network is, is literally only this. It's, it, it, on all scales, this is what's happening. And you can find this, um, this, uh, burn, <laughs> squatting man. You can find the squatting man, the squatter man, um, all over on all scales in the, the Doherty networks and the Doherty sets. That's because the um, the plasma is that's that's a natural current for it to move from scales, moving at orders of magnitude. And I can show you exactly what that means, uh, but I'd rather draw it and show a picture on Facebook or something this week. But so there's a ring current here when we can get into this, and and it's really cool. There's these flip rings and these choke rings that's 9 11 right there right fucking there dude and when you understand this this is how this there's these pinch points that create um the 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 biconical outflow or they they uh navigate what happens at the uh these particular pinch points that's the same that the same runs true for these nine uh i'm going to turn this a color so we can see it real quick uh, i'll go green I'll flip it okay so this is 11 and this is nine these two are the choke ring and the flip ring of the universe and it's just so nuts that like of course 9 and 11 happened and of course that's the numbers that they choose this isn't an accident dude these are the most important, some of the most important gates in the entire system. I was only going to go to 10, but I had to do 11 because, dude, you can't talk about nine. <laughs> Whoops. You can't talk about nine and 10 without talking about 11. So there's your 11th gate, but you could draw it out here or whatever. And charge is recurrent it is a current it recurs it's fractal and it repeats its pattern in the same image and i know that for a fact because i'm right here in the same image that i was 10 minutes ago ranting and raving that is itself the the meaning of invariance we are invariant but we're we're changing very slowly now when you put when you put and when you do this uh, calendrical system here, the, everything makes sense. When you put the Earth at each one of these points and um, at the right uh, interval from source, the whole thing starts to make sense. Birkeland currents are unraveled. There's another person before Don Scott that got into it, and I want to say his name was not Lakovsky. Uh, he talks about him in his talks, but they, they 
both Don Scott and this other gentleman came to the same conclusions about where the planets lie just by studying the vessel function. And that's the same thing that I came to is this conclusion years ago, back in like 2007, as I was uh, drawing this particular um, sequence out. So we didn't even really get into gate 10, which I'm kind of bored with gate 10 anyway, but there's a lot of fun stuff happening inside of five. Five is the skin, next layer. So you have the, the epidermis, you have the dermis, and then you have the subdermis, the subdermal, you have the, you know, the, the visceral, then you have the planet, you know, and then inside the planet you have the core or you have, you have the, the, the outside of the planet. So it, all this is, is the same type of nesting that we're used to seeing inside of, uh, planets, uh, plants, uh, when you cut a carrot, that's a, that's a Birkeland current. Look at it. When you cut a tree, that's a Birkeland current. Concentric rings, nested concentric rings. That's what living systems are. Um, and each one of them is tied to their own individual Birkeland current here. It's so weird. So back to your phalanges flailing in the wind, um, when you're calling storms and you're pulling and steering tornadoes like Dan Winter talks about and, and steering donuts and tauruses, you can feel them go out into a field, go out into the trees, go out into somewhere where the wind's working and you're working with the wind. And I'll be golly darn guaranteed if you do breath work, which I can teach you right here. This is how I do it. <clears throat> you ready? All right. You don't have to go anywhere in the universe. You don't have to do some yoga madra position. You don't just in through the nose. All the way out through the mouth. Put your hands up. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Your hands go up naturally when you're energetic. When you're excited, your hands go up. Your hair goes up. Your your voice goes up. You put... Now I want to show you the rhythm here to I'll stop talking, but... Believe that you're <clears throat> working with the storm, that you're working with nature, you will start transceiving and you will start transcending. Guaranteed. I've done this with a lot of different people. I can um, I can take in different amounts of light. I can expand my eyes. And when I do that, I get the same uh, type of sensation. Well, a little bit different. But when you expand your heart chakra, your eyes get bigger. They, they dilate. Um, when you expand your lungs, which gets the blood pumping because that's where blood comes from, which they don't teach you in school. Your blood is made in your lungs. Your blood is made in your bones. Magnesium and all the other things for your bones is very important because they're electric. And they push that blood out and they make that currency in your body. So anyway, that's an hour and a half. We got through the 10, um, the 10 gates. Uh, I, I guess I threw an extra one in there, the 11th gate. And uh, it just goes on and on and on from there. And each one of them is important and has a completely different geometry inside of it happening. There's the lens of life. You know, and uh, and the Fresnel lenses that are made, um, there's I don't know why they're cut in the shape that they're cut in, but they happen to be the exact same shape as this lens 
inside the third gate here, which acts as a bow, like a bow and arrow for the whole system to, um, to start concatenating and ribbon-like fashion. Uh, here it is, this, whoops, this and this, this lens, that lens right there, and this lens right here are golden mean lenses from this point to this point to this point, from, or no, from this, from tip to tip to tip to tip, that's golden, uh, what's called a golden slice. Um, so anyway, I could go into how golden this is and why the gates are gold and all the gates are transparent gold in uh, Revelation as well. The whole thing is gold and it's transparent. So anyway, I was going to call the Doherty set um, transparent golden scaling, uh, but I'm introducing it to the world through Love is Watching um, slowly because it's not something that, you know, it's not a message for everybody like Russell's work. It's not it's not everybody's message. Some people are going to pick up on it and, and run with it and take it to its next heights and work with me. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the curtain call for anybody who wants to work with me. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more stuff having to do with uh, this technology. So. Yeah, so that's my talk about gates. Thank you guys uh, for being here. We have. Uh, the news hour coming up so please stay tuned for the news hour and feel free to ask any questions or um, uh, chime in at any time so like usual we have we do the news hour uh, on Facebook so I'm gonna pull up Facebook oh man Ford Motor Company oh boy that's what, that's what you get when you put the F in now, huh? Derek and Derek. Derek and Derek. Looking at buying a new car recently. You've been talking about buying a new car around your cell phone. That's probably why Ford showed up in your uh, search. Oh, I just hit it in the wrong Google search. Check this out. Watch. Okay, let me go to a new Google window. Watch. Whoops. Okay. If I put an F in here and press enter, it goes to Ford. Ford Motor Company. But if I put an F in this window up here, it goes to Facebook. And that's probably just because maybe quick search results or, you know, other things. But. Well, one is remembering your search results specifically, and the other one is rem is not remembering your search results. The, the, the main page. Indeed main google page it remembers everything that you've done yeah so and this it, one would it lists be... it so if you but if you if you do a google search off of the main page it'll give you results that you're not normally receiving from the main page right and this would be the this would be the um universal facebook which yeah. there is there isn't such thing because everything's so dialed in that if I type F and press enter on my phone and you type F and press enter on your phone, we're going to get a completely different thing most of the time. It's Unless it's trending, of course. course. If it's trending, it'll show up. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's the trending too, which is also rigged. All YouTube trending is completely all 100% their choice. It's not trending, it's their choice. That's a fact. Yeah. Uh, so they choose what trends. So let me go into uh, the ge the geometric view news. We have a lot of news, dude. I haven't been on the show here uh, doing news in like four weeks. So okay, here's the news. I love how it always starts with this beautiful dragon. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Did you see Andy Hall's newest Thunderbolt video talking about the dragons, by the way? Oh, was it part seven? No, no. It's the first of two parts. He, uh, It's the brand, it's a brand, the brand new Thunderbolts video that came out on Friday. Oh, not yet. He's my favorite, dude. He, by 
by dude, as far as linguists go, like I got a freaking a platonic hard on for that guy right there. Man, just listening to him is like I can't keep up. And and I, and it's all words that I want to use on the regular because it's all in the geometry, you know. So it's so beautiful, and he just breaks it down into planets and vorticities and dragons and oh yeah, he's a badass. Yeah, he just mentions that the dragons haven't gone away; they're just sleeping. Yeah, yeah. I I I listened to uh, the dragon part seven couple like a month ago or something about a, a circuit being a dragon circuit being similar to dragons and electricity and whew, well, dragons are, are are basically arc discharges that yeah that roll, what it roll is. on on onto the land from the from the transition area of the land and sea and they just roll onto land and they carve out the the land well, the Ark of the Covenant is what created uh, the tornadic winds that were around it. Uh, um, dust storm by by day, fire by night. And if you look at the Birkeland current, that was you look the, at the that was a, sorry, sorry, buddy. That was a description of the polar configuration column. It was a column of fire by day. Uh, uh, sorry, a, a, a storm by by day, and it changed into a column of fire by night so that's what that's what they described the connection between mars and earth so do you think that was do you think it was uh literal and this was when the planet shifted its poles some or do you think it was when the planet um mars came over the earth it was it was in it was it was during the uh, during the polar configuration when we when we were locked in into the grip of saturn and between us was mars then as soon as venus was born she slotted into the polar configuration and she started an oscillation between her and mars and us right and here. saturn obviously there's your fire right there there's your standing harmonic wave oscillation building the fire and the interference and it's also a Birkeland current it's just well as we as we know planets don't collide they repel by yeah. giving charge Nothing off to one another. So that charge, when when Venus came into the polar configuration, slotted in and moved down the column, she pushed on Mars, and then Mars, in turn, moved towards Earth. And then that connection, that that glow connection between Mars and Earth, when it got strong enough, it. it connected and, and ignited and, and, and manifested itself so that we could see it as a column of smoke or a storm during the day and a column of fire during it at night. Okay, so the polar configuration is a term coined by comparative... That middle picture right there. That middle, that middle picture right there. That is your column of smoke well, let and me, fire. Let me, let me read what it says here real quick. <clears throat> so the polar configuration is a term coined by comparative mythologist David Talbot had the pleasure of meeting and uh, not to toot my own horn but uh, a great guy and I just can't give him enough love for starting the uh, Thunderbolts project along with Wall and many others. The polar configuration is the axial alignment of the planets held by held close together by electromagnetic forces in a shish kebab formation. Opposing magnetic poles of each planet attracting each other. Wow. Damn. I didn't know Dave Talbot was the one that put that out. Well, it was him and Wallace Thornhill. Dang. He, he just, he Dude, just that coined, just gave he, me goosebumps. He, he, he just coined the, conf the polar configuration phrase. He didn't... Uh, he, he was... Him and, him and Wallace worked together on on this and trying to figure this out because as you yeah, know wallace wall is the scientist and, and david is the historian yeah okay okay so this is this is like um like cosmic dna you know like 
these strings of uh, of a filament. This is actually indeed exactly what I was talking about when I was talking about a force uh, a force free field aligned currents between planets right here. This is the polar configuration, <laughs> right? Isn't that the polar configuration and aligned in alignment? I'm still sharing my screen, right, guys? Yeah, but I'm not sure what you're talking about. Do you see this? These, when, if you, it, well, I was describing this as the solar uh, circuit or the uh, the local chimney, and this is the Birkeman current, and these are the planets coming off of them. So these individual planets pass by each other when the frequencies change, and and they repel each other, and so this would be like the, the an example of that, a geometric. Um, well, I see it. I see it slightly yeah. different. I see it um, as we, me and James were talking about it on the electric uh, view call this, that he initiates every Saturday or Sunday at uh, one. We were hey, talking about this earlier. That, that? No, it wasn't recording. Oh, um, dude, we should we should record it and continue doing it. I'm down. I'll do it. Oh wait, was that today? Oh yeah, yeah, it was today. Um, but we were talking about how, like, I I had referenced the Earth as a failed star. If yeah. if in fact it was created along the Birkeland current and pinched into existence, and the main sequence protostar that is our sun now is the way it is now because it had more material to pinch into into itself to pull into itself and uh, Saturn had less material and it made a brown dwarf star in a pinch there and uh, Mars and, and the Earth were pinched into existence but it didn't have enough gas to accumulate around and make a huge gas envelope like the gas giants have right that sounds similar to what I was talking about here with um, this. This could be the Earth, but if the Earth were to become a sun, it would take all of the elements inside of it and the charge would come in the poles and it would grow to this size instead of this size. And this would be the corona. This would be just a gas bubble of charge. Meanwhile, the charge is coming in here, the north and south pole, um, and turned that uh, small little filament of a of a node into a uh, high capacity or uh, into the, the the sun. Right. So it just hops up layers, and it could go, and it could go dimmer and dimmer, and then turn back into a planet. Well, right? no, I dimmer, think what dimmer. it has to do, what it has to do with, is the amount of of light. Uh, elements that are in in the vicinity when the pinch occurs, it'll pull heavy elements and light elements, and then it'll pinch it all together into a ball and create a star or a gas giant or um, a red a red dwarf sun, uh, sun, or it'll create a a massive red giant. It it all depends. On how much matter is in the is in the area when the pinch occurs that pulls everything together in in the Herberg Harrow objects that are hundreds of AU away from each other or a thousand yeah. AU away from each other, mm -hmm. but but then they after, over time they conglomerate into a solar system. They they all get pulled in by the main sequence star at a certain distance away from them. If they're further than that distance on that um, uh, on on that Birkeland yeah. current, then they won't be pulled in to to create a solar system. They'll just sit there by themselves. Mm -hmm. And we're on one of these um, jets. That's that's what the uh, local chimney is, kind of. It's similar to being on one of these jets, but we're moving in a spiral around the Milky Way in a trajectory. 
but I mean, I can't liken it too much to being on one of these jets because being in one of these jets, there'd be way too much turbulence. Uh, oh. For sure. I mean, I but there's probably life. There's probably life inside of them. On a side note, I just got a message from Wallace Thornhill. Oh, nice. On LinkedIn. I joined Do LinkedIn tell. recently. Yeah. I, well, I posed a question to him if he thought that maybe two photons canceling each other out creates an electron. Here's his response. Hi, Richard. It's actually much simpler than that. To begin, energy is undefined in modern physics and the proton particle doesn't exist. This shows that the very language of physics has no bedrock in reality or certain no bedrock reality because it's all mathematics, which plays with symbols, not reality. That is, it's virtual reality, which looks good on TV, that's all. Meaning, meanwhile, I'm writing the book to show the difference. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Um, so I'm going to continue here with the news hour. So this is, we got the Ark of the Covenant, um, the Holy of Holies inside of the tabernacle, which was the Holy of Holies in the holy place. Um, and we, it's always about the building. It's always about the, it's always been about the building. Um, I can't emphasize that enough because if you go into scriptures, if they're always talking about building the temple, which temple, every one of them has been talked about. I mean, a lot of them in scripture, but this has been an attempt to reach out to Re, uh, reach out to reunite to God or the unknown or the universe or the mysterious or whatever those ethereal currents are. And we build resonant buildings and beautiful buildings um, to try to emulate this energy that's already out there. And we do a damn good job of it because uh, we've, we've already built a lot of buildings that pull energy out of the atmosphere. Um, so I didn't read this whole thing, but this comes from Trevor McGrath. He's a badass on Facebook if you want to look him up. But creating the Ark of the Covenant with sound, you can see the bottle shape, Z pinch there. If you want to jump straight to the directions, then scroll down to the last paragraph in this post before I explain what to do, which is simply a matter of tuning and temperature. I'm going to explain some of the math. This is available, by the way, to everybody on Facebook, um, uh, the Geometric View News. It's open to everyone if you want to look at the links and stuff for the audience. I'm going to explain some of the math as to how I determine this frequency and what else this frequency corresponds with and syncs the arc with via sympathetic resonance. A lot of reading. And he goes down here. In order to create the Ark of the Covenant through sound, use a tone generator. Some are free online. Or tune a musical instrument to play 131 hertz, ideally in a room that is 68 degrees Fahrenheit due to temperature affecting. This guy's crazy, but he's also really cool. He's onto a lot of fun stuff. So here's the rest of the reading. You can read it yourself. Uh, this is a fast news hour, so I'm going to rip through this. And like I said, you can check this out. It will be in the links posted below. So this looks cool. I'm going to spend a little more time on other things that I know about more or that, you know, whatever. Some things deserve more time. Uh, it's not my choice. I'm just trying to look at whatever it is. So here we go. This comes from an interesting individual who runs a bunch of cool, crazy stuff and helps me out. And he's very smart. Um, I'd love to have him on the podcast someday. Come on, Parlette. I actually haven't asked him yet, but it'd be fun. So, leading and lagging currents are a phenomena that occur as a result of alternating current. In a circuit with alternating current, the value of voltage and current vary sinusoidally. In this type of circuit, the terms lead and lag and in phase are used to describe current with difference to voltage. Oh, ref current with reference to voltage. Current is in phase with voltage 
when there is no phase shift between the sinusoids describing their time varying behavior. This generally occurs when the load drawing the current is resistive. Blah, 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 blah. Check out the lead if you want to check it out. Here's the link. Here's the link. But it interests me. I mean, come on. This is the geometric view, um, but it's pretty much electric. That's why I started a brand new podcast. If anybody wants to check us out on YouTube, it is the geomet the uh, Electric Universe Geometry. Electric Universe Geometry. We have a Facebook page with 15,000 members. So um, we're trying to uh, move some of the heads there to YouTube. And we're interviewing in each individual electric universe superstar or whatever you want to call them one by one yes that includes you too rick um one by one and to get their their home story just I'm and, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and i'm just gonna keep interviewing them i'm gonna bring them back and we're gonna i'm gonna go into your childhood i'm gonna go we're gonna have good times we're gonna drink beers like it's freaking joe rogan show we're going to smoke doobies and we're going to fucking hang out. And that's what I do with, with these guys and these peeps. I ask them to do their favorite drug of choice or just be, get to a comfortable place where we can just act like we're here together face to face. And I, I've already interviewed two different people. Um, we got episodes three and four coming out. Uh, we have Aurora for the first episode, Tufan for the second one. And uh, yeah, so check us out. Now back to the news hour. Electric underwater current. That looks pretty cool. So while that loads, we'll continue down. How getting a dog changes your brain, according to neuropsychologists. Duh. I want to say just the fact that my dog came up and licked my mouth just now, that's a duh. Whether it's a parasite going inside my brain and changing me, or a uh, or a worm going into my belly. It's going to change me. <laughs> Sorry. That was a cynical view on this article without even opening it. I don't even gag when I pick up his poop anymore. I don't recognize myself. <sighs> That's a quote here. <laughs> wow. Wow. Even the dog poops good. Hey, Fido. Anyway, so yeah, this person, she would not describe herself as a dog person, though she enjoyed visiting other people's dogs. She couldn't wrap her head around loving a dog so much to have to clean up its messes. But when the pandemic hit, blah, 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 I changed my mind and then I realized my mind changed. Hmm. Funny how that works, isn't it? Oh, there's your uh, Birkeland current right there. That is the Doherty set right there. That is inverse square scaling. Hi, oh, Gerald Pollock oh, just yeah. accepted my request to be connected. Yay! New nice ideas, on right? Facebook. No, yeah, on, on uh, Facebook. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Good, good, because I didn't think he was on Facebook. Yeah, he's on LinkedIn oh, yeah. though. Dude, that's what's up. I love Pollock, man. Like, there's two people who I really need to reach out to. Well, actually, I already reached out to them, and I corresponded with both of them so i guess now i need to talk with them now that i reached out <laughs> well i, I found it. i found eileen mccusick's name in there too and i threw her a a request to to add me so we'll see if she does <laughs> nice you know, yeah i need you know to who she is it. right of course yeah i met them both oh. at the same uh, conference oh never mind never mind never mind Shh, i'm yep. shutting up 2017 i got pictures with uh with pollock um and and then i elaine mccusick was uh right next to me or right in front of me um uh, during my breakout room we all had breakout rooms so she was hanging out right next to me and then i had hawthorns on my right hand side so it was great Oh yeah, he's um, in there too. I found him on, so I throw him, I threw him an, uh, a a request. <laughs> Sweet, yeah, dude, I love I love the Hawthorns, man. Love, love, love. I love 
the whole electric universe community. I mean, it's like, I didn't realize that I had a, um, a tribe or a camp, you know, or people that would ever understand me ever until I came out to the electric universe event one, only one. And then for life, I'm completely a thousand percent like, dude, these are my people. They're speaking my language. I understand the universe more now and the geometry I've been working on for 16 years at that time. <laughs> right. Or 14. Well, to, to, to tell you the truth, buddy, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this golden ratio that you keep showing with the uh, authority set and all of this. I'm still, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Well, when I get Don Scott on the episode, which I'm sure I will, which I, I need to move fast because I'm actually trying to interview people who are older first because I see this lasting a long time. Yeah. I'm trying to interview people who are older first so as to get to them before um, I interview other people. So if you remember... And, and the before electric, they pass away, yeah. The Electric Universe started with... Um, the first episode was with Don Scott and I asked him to come on and he said, yes. So I know he'll come on and with him and I talking about this together, I think we'll be able to um, help people understand what it is because um, his review of it is just outstanding and, you know, describes it as if you were inside of a Birkeland current and you could see all the intricate detail. So taking his word for it and then, and then having him get on the show is really where I need to go. Um, and then even if that show were to be turned in, just that episode were to be turned into a book, you know, or just like a, a little magazine or flip, I would love that. That would be, look, Facebook just literally changed on its own. I didn't click anything and it got me out of where I was. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. Now I have to go back to the group. Wow. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so this is, I think, underwater. Was that? No, that's your brain. Okay, let's see what this underwater currents is all about. I'm going to mute it. Nope. Uh, we were told to let I don't want to get a copyright strike just for this. I've been doing good lately, guys. We already have like 16 of them. Oh, is this our boy? He looks like one of the guys from Sapphire. Whoops. Dang, nab it. Okay, so what is going on here? Let's get Parks down. Canada. <laughs> hey man, I love Canada. If I'm looking if I'm looking for Canada, I'm looking for Canada. Dude, I you can't even get in Canada right now, bro. It's illegal. What are you talking about? I'm here right now. What you talking about, Willis? You can't get in there from the United States. <laughs> well, if you if you fly, you can. Well, that's far go. Oh well, yeah, because COVID doesn't travel in cars, or it only wait doesn't travel in planes. It only travels in cars, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or if you're standing up in a restaurant, but when you're sitting down, it's fine. But you still have to quarantine yourself. If you come by plane for 14 days. And who's monitoring that? No one. Oh, don't worry. The, gov <laughs> the government will put you up. Oh, yeah. They'll say they'll look at your phone and they'll say, you were supposed to be sitting and bunkering for 14 days. And guess what? We have uh, Google tracks that says that you've been all no, they'll, over they'll... my land. No, they'll put you up in a hotel here in Canada somewhere for 14 days until your quarantine's over. Then you can go about your business. Will they pay for it? Sir, yes, sir. Wow, I'm coming to Canada. So here we go. This is really great work. Um, work that works exactly with uh, the work that we work with. Work and work, 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 work. Work it now. Work it, girl. Work it out. All right. Anyway, I think that's RuPaul. Who knows if it is, but she's taking over, girl. I mean, boy. Wait. Whoops, I mean, girl. Girl, girl, girl. I'm so confused. 
here's a here's the vortex coming in they I, i'm gonna start using numbers and stuff like this on mine because i'm always like oh this is the golden mean just trust me this is the golden this is the golden circle this is the golden torus so i just need to act actually like show line to line well now that i have my computer situation better and i actually have illustrator and stuff um i can actually make that happen so this is beautiful Beautiful, take it for what it is, it's gorgeous. Um, you got your amplicone vortex, you got your biconical flows, uh, both 19.7, 19.47, 51.84 are located oscillating in and around the midpoint, which is the singularity point of a given cone. And also the uh, angles of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And so, Put all that together in, in decagon recursive nodes and phi golden ratio pentagonal fractal heterodyning, which is the reason why it all goes back to building at this and Freemason and Masonic and secrets and because it all does come back to the building. How are you? Hmm, let we got a, all the money in the world. What are we going to build? We're going to build something great. I don't care if it takes 700 years to build. We're going to build it. All right, let's get the best damn builder we got and the best blueprints, and we'll we'll build something. Then they build, they build and build and build, but they start with a blueprint, and it usually has to do with, and especially back in the day, um, during Egyptian times, with the sun and uh, certain important angles that we're still discovering to this day. A little bit of the Stargate, some of the Stargate there. So uh, thank you, Runcel Arkea, for your work. And uh, maybe I'll tag you and let you know you're featured in our show here. Everybody who shares their stuff on Facebook is liable to be on my show or anything out there in the world I'll put on my show because it's free. Anyway, this is awesome. This is another post from Ethan Clark about... Uh, the energetic electrons and um, Whistler waves. This is awesome. So it's I'll, like he's describing the Van Allen belts. Yep, indeed. And this is where life is. This is where the spirit of the soul and spirit is of our lives here on Earth. Um, I, I honestly believe that we come out of the sound recursions inside of Van Allen belts. So. Energetic electrons from the Earth's radiation belts can precipitate into the upper atmosphere, causing ozone depletion, affecting weather and climate. This is awesome how he pulls this together, dude. This is great. He shows that we are creating um, direct energy weapons, and they're not direct energy weapons. It's just from us um, on the electric grid that we're charged into, pulling it um, down to different places. Uh, the Whistler waves, particularly down to different places, which is starting fires. It's really cool um, theory and ideas that this gentleman's proposing here. So check it out for yourself. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, this video, wave, this is perfect having to do with uh, Whistler waves and chirping and, and uh, the stuff that we've been talking about in these uh, episodes. So he talks about ozone depletion from these Whistler waves that are coming in. Look, these are this is it. These come in and they uh, interact uh, with everything on Earth and even become spherics, which are radio waves uh, from lightning. Lightning produces radio waves. They're called spherics, of course, because it's all spherical. So check that out. Here's a Whistler wave. Oh, here's your, there it is. This is a missile of electromagnetic energy called a Whistler mode plasma wave. I love it. It forms in the ionosphere above lightning, high powered VLF transformers and power lines. Yes, from our power grid also. These missiles of energy can simply amplify 
forming coherent beams of energy in the at upper atmosphere. Self-amplifying. Yeah, oh, sorry. The, these missiles of energy can self-amplify. These aren't directed energy weapons, DEWs, from satellites. They are a byproduct of human, humans' increased use of the power grid technology. In some cases, such as in China, these missiles form the power, the, these missiles from the power grid interact with those from the largest VLF transformers, uh, transmitters in the world in Australia. Coherent ducts form between the North and South hemispheres, and these missiles will fly back and forth. This may also be happening with the West Coast power grid, as these missiles bounce back from the middle of the ocean in the South Pacific back to the West Coast power grid. This is not a conspiracy theory or wild speculation. This is peer-reviewed science research from modern satellites that can, that can and do detect this activity. This information is available to anybody, and physicists are avidly researching this topic to understand how it works and to mitigate potential problems that may arise from our increasing use of broadcast and power grid technology. People want to raise awareness. Why don't we put as much what the fuck efforts into this as we do directed energy weapons? Or, okay, yeah. All right. So here's a bunch more stuff. Revealed previously unknown. Too high. Uh, okay. An event. Uh, yeah, we don't have to read all that. But yeah, you can check it out yourself. So yeah, he's proposing that Whistler waves are what's causing these directed energy weapons, which is like weird because I'm proposing that Whistler waves right now recently and from the beginning of Earth are what creates uh, life and, and continues to keep that seal of the filament of life uh, fresh and refreshed directly from the umbilical cords of the sun. So physicists, the entire universe might be a neural network. Yeah, I would agree. I would totally agree. Yeah, if they think it's a neural network, and it could be, but mm -hmm. you know, physically we call it Birkeland currents, and it's a network of Birkeland currents connecting to each other at well, infinitum, as far as we can see, as far as we know. Right. Well, that's really, really strange. Because we live in a world right now where, uh, sure, there's Birkeland currents, and we're lucky that lucky enough to give him credit for that, and lucky enough that science does sometimes talk about mainstream physics and astrophysics. But there's a lot, there is a lot more work to do inside of this in order for them all to be called Birkeland Currents. And you and me, Rick, we've been talking about this for a long time, for years now, about uh, the necessity of different names for these currents um, because they can't all be called Birkeland Currents because everything does this type of uh, counter-rotating, uh, coaxial type of uh, perturbations uh, when charge is involved in most fluids and things like that. There's a, a pumping involved, a two-way type of motion. So there is a there is Birkeland current scaled up all the way up and all the way down, I think. Um, eyeballs up, all, all, eyeballs all the way up and down also scaled. You know, it's a lenticular, um, hollow universe, electric universe. Uh, and if we look at things like that, then we can see that the, the, the center here uh, like Russell talks about is stillness is where all motion comes from and moves around about and that's what like helps to Russell really solidified in our perception I hope um, you know with a lot of other uh, people that this is illusion it's all uh, seeming motion everything is seeming to be in motion and s simulated motion it's all simulated so uh, with um uh David, David Bohm 
an Alan aspect, you get the idea of the quantum world turn in, turned into the holographic universe. And that kind of happened at the same time. And also you get Russell talking about everything simulated. So my long rant coming back into it is sure, you could call them all Birkeley currents, um, but I think there's Scott currents. I think there's Eddy currents. I think there's Doherty currents. I think there's there's so many different names for each one of them. It's like call they're so different from each other. It's like calling a triangle a square, a triangle, and calling a circle a square because they're so different when you get down into it. But one thing that's the same is the Bessel function, the Gaussian Bessel filament um, of the networks, whether it's more rarefied or uh, or more contracted. Uh, compressed, whether the field's more compressed or more expanded, there is what Russell talked about is the breadth of and life of the universe, and that that is the uh, the square of of space and the circle of uh, where one's expanding and one's contracting. That can be that that's all brought into into this too, but. Yeah, long answer short, sorry, uh, is yeah, there's a there should be a bunch of names for these currents, and we're just starting to peel the lid off recently. So we'll see what this little thing's about. Physicists, the entire universe might be a neural network. The idea is definitely crazy, not really, but if it's crazy enough to be, it might be true. That remains to be seen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Provocative preprint. University of Minnesota. Okay. Next time I'll go through some of these articles and read them before I do news hour so I can actually comment on them. But I'm just kind of pulling it up for everybody else and doing little little talks, little anecdotes. Well, I'd like to comment on this if I might. The <laughs> exactly. vastness of the universe and the galaxies that are positioned on these Birkeland currents between galaxies are reminiscent of brain cells and the connections between brain cells. It's very reminiscent of it. I mean, you see images of what we think it looks like out there and what, it, what we think it looks like in there, and they're almost identical. So, so this is the brain like universe hypothesis um and if you look into the brain like universe theory i don't know if i if that's the right exact name of it but when you when you look into it there's there's i'm not, uh, I'm not suggesting that the universe is a brain that's some of some massively huge being walking around out there somewhere i'm just suggesting that it's very similar in its structure indeed yeah i agree and i think a lot of people are agreeing we can see that it's a neural um we can see the distribution of material in the galaxy and in the universe as being uh not uniform like we once thought but under very similar to, to to the gaps between neurons in our brain yep very similar to the gaps between atoms in matter that's why that's why neural link is is gonna work and you know they just recruited people and out of all jobs that i think i could actually advance the the human race with i think that for me to go to neural link i don't think that would be selling out i think it would be the most advantageous for us but What's neural also, link? uh neural link is is uh um Elon Musk just came out with it. Oh, oh, okay, you know, it, gotcha. Yeah, which, I mean, like, see, the thing is... Yeah, is I'm no not matter touching what that with a 10-foot pole. Well, exactly. No, no matter what direction I go with any of my work, um, it's going to be either me working for them or them working on my work, using my work without my consent, either or, which is open for the public. 
you know, I wouldn't present it if it wasn't. That's what all things are. When you when you're an artist and you give it and you give your painting to the world, it's no longer yours. If someone wants to destroy it, burn it, or put more art or paint it or make change the painting, that's up to the universe. Same with music. You create a song and you release it to the universe, and we're trying to get all these rights from this stuff. It's like, dude, like, oh, you're painting. That's why people do covers. They make a cover of the song. Let people emulate you. Let people respect you and and want to uh, make a facsimile of your masterpiece because it's so grand, you know. These visions of grandiosity. Some so of these freaking people, wicked awesome. Yeah, man. These, these these we should be having visions of grandiosity and these these characters that are uh, larger than life uh, are, are drawn to psychotic situations uh, like Hollywood and their large, these large personalities, these iconoclasts um, that have glowing eyes for fame and for everybody's looking at me. You can go any direction in life. I think there's yeah. other reasons why they do strange things, but I'm not going to get into that. Yeah, there's a million reasons why everyone does strange things. Even if we weren't doing strange things and people thought we were doing strange things, that's scary enough to keep people away. <laughs> that's the scary part. All you got to do is put a certain logo there and it scares everyone away. NASA listens to electrons whistle while they work. This is, uh, I'm, I'm going full force for sonobiology, sonotropism, um, electrospeciation theory. Electrospeciation theory is one of my own brainchilds, and it is based off of the predictive neural networks and the Doherty networks and the Doherty set. So I really literally think that this is how life formed. It's a speciation hypothesis, and it comes directly out of the geometry. Um, and it ties every creature with an umbilical cord to the sun through every other creature with every other creature as uh, um, the feeding cycle, the, the, not the food cycle, but the animals eating each other, the food cycle. Let's listen to this. Can you guys hear me? thousand percent billion percent trillion percent i think that what i'm talking about is spot on that sounds like frogs that sounds like spring peepers you keep listening to more and more of of this uh the chorus and the radio waves coming from the earth's atmosphere up in the van allen belts you will be able to hear every creature on earth because our bodies are made with the same substance as that sound that pulls us into and out of the crust of the earth. Oh, that reminds <clears throat> me of a song. Whistle while you work. Hitler was a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here's, here's more. Okay, now, if you're a synesthete like me, you will be able to see the geometry of this. Um, and I didn't know I was until earlier this year, but I saw the geometry. After I heard this for the first time, I, I saw it. I saw the geometry, and I'm like, huh, that's a pine tree. And then I looked it up, and the geometry of it was a pine tree. So I'm like, I get what's going on here. I can actually see what this geometry looks like. Or these sounds.
When lightning strikes the ground, the electrical discharge can also trigger Whistler mode plasma waves. Some of the waves escape beyond the atmosphere to bounce like bumper cars along the Earth's magnetic field lines out in space between the North and South Poles. They go around from North and South Poles from a lightning. And the wolves control the lightning where it strikes. So they're in tune with the Northern Lights. With, uh, dude, it's all tied in together. Since the lightning creates a range of frequencies and since higher frequencies travel faster, the wave howls a falling pitch, giving the wave its name, a whistler. Now let's listen to chorus. And these are all are coming from this, these, these geometries. And when you look at the geometry of these waves, it's the Doherty set, of course. Because the, the waves themselves are propagating. When you have propagating solenoidal, cylindrical type of uh, plasmas or RF radio frequencies, you, you get these bundles and these bundles of packets of sounds and noises. And yeah, these layers and layers is what builds beings and keeps the plasma rivers alive. One pr plasma river or one sound goes away that being goes away on earth it's not because humans are creating and killing off the environment it's because this whistler wave out here doesn't exist anymore because the resonance over here from this wave doesn't exist so therefore that creature doesn't exist inside of the food cycle and it all comes back to the gates this is all whistler wave dynamics it's all helicon physics helicon physics is what this is so let's listen to chorus. Birds, birds, whales, dolphins. They, we make the same noise that they make because our bodies are the same exact noise that's in, this, in, the, in the heavens. This is above, as above, so below. This is creepy. Haven't heard this one yet. Oh, that's creepy. That sounds like the planet breathing. This is the gut microbiome of the earth or like the brain or like the plasma of a brain. So let's, before we listen to this, Whistler mode waves traveling inside the plasma sphere called plasma spheric hiss and sound a lot like radio station static. Some scientists think hiss is also caused by lightning strikes but others think it could be caused by chorus waves that have leaked inside the plasma sphere. Both chorus and hiss waves are key shapers in the near earth environment, including the Van Allen radiation belts, donut shaped rings of high energy particles encircling the planet. Each one of these has their own geometry, dude. And these are gorgeous geometries as they open and close and create these other counter uh, space uh, rotations around them. Love it. Thank you, NASA. Not a space association. Yeah, either way. By the way, Joe Rogan's funded by the Bain Corporation. When you find that hole, run down it and run away from it, which is uh, Mitt Romney. And anytime Bill Gates goes on stage uh, and talks about anything having to do with the COVID, all Bain Corporation, Bain Company, all the Bain of our existence. Go ahead, look it up. It's all Bain. Anytime there's uh, Dave Chappelle goes on and looks like a different person and, uh, than he used to, Bain Corporation. Uh, this person looks like a fake person of that old person and they swapped them out. Bain Corporation. Bain. Look it up. It's fucking weird. Big, deep, crazy shit going on with that company. And, man, we we sure lucked out by not having Mitt Romney as president for that one. But we're still all being screwed. That's who, that's who Bill Gates works for, if you want to know, ladies and gentlemen. So I love putting that information out just as little tidbits here and there. 
look up really graceful on YouTube. Really graceful on YouTube. She's the best. She'll tell you what's going on. Along with Corbett, James Corbett with the Corbett Report. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's where it's at. So kind of trailing off towards the end of the news hour here. Scientists at the University of California, Los Angeles, present new research on a curious cosmic phenomenon known as Whistler waves. I keep put I keep pushing this and pumping this stuff because um, it's it's the geometry of what I work on literally. So helicon physics, look into it. This is how you turn on and off the machine. If anybody wants to turn it on or off. A simple hello method. Hello, how's it going? Going good. Is this Josh? I have a question. This is Josh. Yep. Hey, what's your question, brother? Like, um, can you say something about like how you would sing a protective bubble around yourself? Oh, oh, oh sing a bubble or uh, or a merkaba around you? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, a lot of people aren't grounded. Uh, and by grounded, I mean fundamentally into uh, some sort of roots that make sense. Uh, so many people are breaking away from their, their roots. My ground is Christ. Other people have different grounds. Um, but mine is, you know, it's Jesus Christ. Uh, other people form different types of energy bubbles around them. And that energy bubble is, is going to be what your heart desires. And it will also be what comes out of your mouth. So the bubble is going to be identical to what comes out of your mouth, to what comes out of your heart and what your heart is made of as your, as your most interest, the, the most interesting thing that you are interested in will be okay. your bubble will be your bubble. So in order to create a good big bubble, you got to get interested into certain things that you're studying, whether it's Buckminster geodesics or different higher dimensional geometries, hop vibrations, um, just a general Merkaba, which is just a spinning star tetrahedron. But you can build light cathedrals the more creative you are and the deeper in tune you are into the universe. Um, to, in order to build a, a protective bubble during this day and age, in 2020, um, which I literally think we're probably just moving, walking, running right into the tribulation or something along those lines. And I don't want to be like fear mongering, but like I'm just through different research and things that other people are saying and my own intuition, <clears throat> the best way to build a bubble is to, is to, uh, is, is through your heart, through love, through expanding your heart. Um, whether it starts with just a puppy or another person or a caterpillar or a blade of grass, you can love that thing unconditionally and that, that that appreciate that little drop of appreciation of loving that blade of grass and maybe some snail that's eating it uh, will will and can become a resounding gong of your appreciation for the universe. My bubbles are my bubbles are built out of appreciation and thankfulness. Um, uh, that's how I build my life and my bubbles and my my demeanor. Um, that's, and people know it, people, people see it, they come to it for whatever it is. If, you know, some people do, some people don't, you know, I'm, I'm abrasive at times and I turn people off. Sometimes I, 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 I just talk about this geometry. I know not to ever talk about it unless I'm on these groups because nobody gives a fuck nowadays. You want to build a big <laughs> bubble. You want to build a good bubble. You, you love something else if you can't love yourself and, and that will help start a spring like starting a, a fire and that wellspring in your heart will continue to swell 
and to the point where you'll be overflowing with uh, gratitude, abundance, and uh, giving yourself to other people because your bubble will soon be overflowing and overwhelming. You won't be able to contain it. You'll just be able to, you'll just have to give it to people because that's what happens. That's the long answer. Sorry. No, that's, that's a great answer. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. I appreciate it. So um, we did meet on Facebook, right? Uh, and you called. I, I'm not sure how we met. How did you? Uh, jo this is Joshua here. You want to introduce yourself? I'm Josh. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really into like toroids and this type of stuff. Um, so I'm just trying to learn more. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for being here on the show. Um, feel free to ask any questions at any time. Um, I, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate people, uh, interested people wanting to learn more. If people are here for learning about Tauruses, Whatever people are, whatever people are into, you know, I know people have fetishes, not saying that you do, everybody should, I think everybody does, but I, I talk to people all across the board, no matter what people, if people are drawn to this content, they're drawn to it for a reason, you know, love is watching and it's keeping, it's keeping watch out for other people too. Uh, and that's, that's what we do. That's what I like to do. And that's, uh. It's it's part of my philosophy. So I chose uh, I chose the big eyeball in all of us in the universe to uh, to remind people that hey man, love is here. It's in you and it's watching. You can touch something and feel it and love it so much. If you can ex if you can expand your senses to to touch something and it feels so beautiful, you cry. That's what your body needs. You can, sure, we watch movies and it, it's so emotive that it can make us cry. That's a cinematic production, which involves music, pictures that are moving, motion picture, music and pictures that can make people cry. Now, sure, you can have a memory and cry, but can you? smell something and erupt into tears. That is the smell of the essence, the effervescence of, of someone who has the spirit moving through the universe. They have a smell to them. There is literally a, a heavenly scent that is ascribed and talked about throughout different um, scriptures around the world. And there's a, there's a scent of heaven and it, and it like, I have had it happen quite a few different times, but it's like, it, it comes out of nowhere and it's almost like you can carry that with you. But if, if someone needs, if, if someone can pull their senses enough to actually cry from touching something cry from smelling something your senses are there to pull them and exercise them so much that they snap and that's what a lot of drugs do and taking entheogens they extend expand your senses now if you can do that in your everyday life and and uh exercise uh restraint and exercise uh the ability to to work with your senses in your brain then it helps you become, I, I know this, a better person, uh, helps you build your, um, your patience first off. But this is get, all going to be parts of classes that have stuff that I teach later of a longitudinal psychological study that I've been doing for 12 years now, almost 13. So that's later in life. Um, but this is how, like my philosophy, I dial in not avoiding my senses i heavily indulge in my senses because the music is made for you when someone's in a band and they make a band and they make an album and you listen to it it's yours you are allowed to possess that and cry to it and own it and transform your heart 
and the people around you through your ambition and draw from that music. You can physically make yourself stronger from music. You can mentally make yourself stronger and you can, you can emotionally soften your heart with music. And that's one of the keys into the universe to help us resensitize ourselves in this desensitized population that we live in. So I feel very preachy in this episode for whatever reason. I don't know why, man. Shit's really hitting the fan. And I was going to start going back to church this week. Actually, circumstances have it that I did show up randomly uh, on Wednesday at church and it, it was my best friend, one of my good friends who uh, runs a church. And I was like, wow, well, that happened for a reason. So this is how you turn on and off the machine, the gates. If you look at Saturn and you look at uh, the pinch points of why hexagons are hexagons, you'll see, you'll find the treon ray. And the treon ray is a pinch outside of the circle. It's just the arc part of a circle. That's really interesting crazy shit once you get into that but that's just all part of the pinch um the unified field can't speak enough like i already said here it is go into that um i'm just kind of skimming through this stuff but yeah the unified field that's where it's at of course the toroids blowing toroidal bubbles. I love playing this. Because this explains... I'm just going to play this for a second. So... We're just going to look at it. We're just going to look at it and think about Theodordian roots right here. I'm going to hit this pipe. That's why we're going to do this. Think about these Theodordian roots. Think about the vessel. All right, so that hyperboloid when they flip back over is so sweet. And it clearly looks like someone's dipping their finger into a bucket, a five gallon bucket of um, water. And this is reflection that's coming off of it. Someone put a filter on it and added it to make it look rainbow. So. <laughs> Oh, I just, oh. Fe just found Peter Mungo Jup. Oh, nice. Sent him an invitation to connect with me. See if he uh, accepts it. Yeah, Peter Mungo Jup. What, that's what's up. That's what's up. My man. Oh, right there. instant petrification. Poof, you're a rock. <laughs> hey, man. You pillar of, solid, pillar of salt or a limestone oh. rock. Sorry, first poof, you're dead, then poof, you're a rock. <laughs> uh, so Russell says, there are no particles or groups of particles which hold the atom together as nuclei. Gravity does not work that way. All centering, all creating matter is centered by holes of space except one element in each octave. This is what I'm talking about, too. A hollow universe, a lenticular universe, octaves. 
the energy of creation centers each whole that centering invisible omnipotent energy is God's mind and your mind naturally you cannot see it but you can know it for it is your identity and your intelligence it is the source of your creations as it is the source of all creation Walter Russell sapphire sapphire can create this is really interesting to me oh yeah all matter starts as rings all matter starts as rings the geometry of it and it's all centered by a hollow center so this is awesome so i named my daughter aurora oriana okay middle name oriana which apparently means both there was no meaning for oriana when I named her that, but then they, they, someone came up with the meaning because I wanted to come up with the meaning. That's what kind of my point was. But then I guess the meaning of it means um, morning sun. So, and so does Aurora. So it's like dawn, morning sun. So it's, so it's kind of funny. Her name is now means like morning sun, morning sun. Now check this out. I found this out the other day. Sapphire. Uh, which comes from the Sapphire Project. Why does this say this? Stop. Uh. Click on click on another post, buddy. It's just frozen up, dude. Now, uh. motherfucker. Bitch. Whatever. All right. Now I have to go back to it. All right, that wasn't so bad. A lot of news, though. All oh, these are rocks right here. Uh, rock. Hey, rock hound friends. I just want to share something amazing about rhodonite. It will mend your scrapes and bruises. My daughter came home last night and look see. She put the stones on and it moved the current. It either induced the current out or the blood in either way it looks like it healed significantly that's pretty cool okay so sapphire project sapphire can create control contain sustain and repeat at will any number of plasma regimes no other technology in the world can do this each market in itself represents a trillion dollar industry over the next 10 years orion energy is currently engaging investors to commercialize the technology. Orion. Dude. Oriana. That's hilarious. That's my baby. You don't know Orion Energy, my friend? No, I just learned. Well, I didn't know that was the name of it until I, I read it, but I didn't know it was pronounced like that until I listened to them talk about it. Dude. That's, dude, that's literally my kid's name. Orion. Oriana. Orion. So I was just like so sweet. I was so I thought that was cool. On top of being cool already for being Sapphire. I just dropped the link for Orion Energy Limited. Oh nice. Perfect. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Here's a geometry, nice folding geometry. We'll wrap it up here uh within the next you know, five to seven minutes here to wrap it up at about three hours. Um, this is awesome. That's not a freaking awesome uh, exploration into tube toroidal dynamics and vorticity and Birkeland currents and Gaussian vessel beams, beams and everything else that we've been talking about. I don't know what is. Isn't that <laughs> just laser beam or laser beams this, projected on things that are spinning? This is those rotating, um, those rotating blinking lights uh, that you can program to turn into like an ad 
like a Coca-Cola ad. Oh, right, yeah, okay, gotcha. You remember seeing that commercial a while back yeah. or that video? Yeah, no, I know, I know what you're talking about now. I forget the name of those, but there's four or five sticks aligned here. One, two, three, four, five, six sticks here aligned, all programmed to do the similar geometry, making it look as though there's a warp hole or worm tunnel, tunnel or something. And it just titillates me, man. I just love it. There's it with lines. I haven't watched the whole thing. Maybe we should just watch the whole thing because there's probably some more cool geometries. But you can program the spinning geodesics in there. You can program it to be, I mean, it already is a Birkeland current, but you can see how it dilates and opens and closes. And compression and rarefaction makes the system come closer and makes planets spin past each other through uh, resonance, you know, different resonances, sympathetic resonances and other things. So, good stuff, though. And I think that we're back to the news here, because I already went over this on the last episode, which is great. The implicate and explicate order uh, pulling together the uh, strong, electro-strong and electro-weak gravitative forces here, showing the toroids, which is actually 9-11 again. Nine is the green, and 11 is the red. Wait, nope, nine is the red, and green is 11. Yeah. And the forces naturally are locked tidally, I would say, not tidally, but geodesically locked. Um, the the electro-weak force versus the electro-strong force, keeping things close together and not touching and allowing orbits and the seeming motion of things in life. And then here, we're back there. There you go. All right. Well, you guys have any questions, comments, anything you want to talk up, talk about? Uh, I can done and up. done and done. Done and done and done. All right, well, Josh, thank you for being here for your first episode. I'm hoping that you can make it for the next episode. Um, I appreciate your company. Thanks, yeah. Absolutely. If you feel like talking more um, uh, or want to open up more or ask more questions on the next episode, uh, feel free. And uh, like always, thank you, Rick, for being here. This was a perfect episode to, uh, hey, hey, Josh, to try just to. One, just one comment to Josh before you close up. Okay. Think of magnetic fields as nested toroids, like that Russian doll, smaller toroid inside a smaller toy, toroid inside a smaller toroid, or lar sorry, inside a larger toroid, and so on and so forth until the uh, end of the tor uh, end of that magnetic field. And then you can think of it zero. as gravity yeah. as well. Gravity does similar thing. And that's how the you build. That's the electric question, force right? does a similar thing as well, creating these magnetic fields out in space and around planets and around suns. Yeah, it's all like, it's body. all nested toroids. Yeah, and around yeah. your body and your. So that's how you build. What your what was your question again? How to build? Uh, how do you build those Merkaba type of fields? Yeah, singing a protective bubble. There you go. Amen. Yeah, I think, I think it's more it, you're singing it is you're imagining it. Uh, you don't have to sing it. You just have to imagine it. But you can you just have to imagine your your bubble being protective and, and doing what you want it to do. And it, it will do it. Can okay. I offer power of the mind? Can I offer a song if you want to sing a protective bubble? Um, uh, it's a song called Baths Inner. Inner. And dude. Okay. I'm just going to have to play this for the outro a little bit here. Images. Speaking of baths and inner, that's like about as Illuminati as it gets. <laughs> Whoops. Put that together. Uh, that's funny. But not funny. And I'm um, closing that down, and I'm going to pull it up on YouTube here because 
they'll actually be able to pull it up. So yeah, I sing, I sing protective bubbles, uh, but I don't think of them as protective bubbles um, because I guess my fear, uh, at different times, fear heightens and people are in different situations. So indeed, you do need to sing protective bubbles at times and, and, and to vocalize a body into manifestation is to sing it. You're actually using, you can think it as one thing, but it doesn't have a body until you sing it into existence or you write it, your thought onto paper, or then it has a body. So actually singing is really, really good. Um, or talking, um, prayer, um, uh, crying aloud. That's why I go back to crying and using, allowing the senses to allow you to cry. So let me see here. That's inner. Inter, not inner. My bad. Darker, darker. Okay, here we go, guys. Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike. Moving the mic over. Here we go. I'm going to pray us out and sing us a, uh, or uh, mudras. Use my fingers to dance a, a coat of protection upon you specifically and the audience members and anybody else who wants to listen. All right, guys. If you're still here, thank you for being here and look forward to having you next week. Thank you all the listeners and thank you all the subscribers and all your time and uh, really, really do appreciate you. We have, uh, we're, we're really going up in views and that's uh, thanks to you guys, the, the listeners, the lovers out there. Love is watching. Thank you for doing that. Geometric View is a Love is Watching product, a Love is Watching being. Thank you for doing that. Keep your eyeballs out. Pay attention. There's a lot going down this year. Be vigilant. Be mindful. Be insightful. Be loving. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being kind. Share the love. Spread the love. Become the love. Amen. Thank you for joining us for episode 37, season 4.
life. Please serve the cause. Love. Life. Serve living to the fullest. I'm in living life, I'm in living color, I'm an air drop, I'm an earth dang, I'm an earth dang, I'm an earth dang, I'm an earth dang.